Back here in Pinehurst, hot times on the golf course. Be hot for the fans a little bit later today. I already filled up my water bottle at the hydration station. Some folks will be coming to the cool down station here a little bit later. These fans will be blowing cold air. They're not on right now, but don't really need it just yet. It's really comfortable. Anthony Baglione in the WRL Severe Weather Center with what the rest of the day will look like. Yeah, I think as we go through the rest of today, Jeff, it's going to be at least noticeable compared to where we were yesterday humidity wise, but it is not going to be where you walk outside and it's one of those days where you think, oh, I'm going to go back inside in the air conditioning. It's still going to be humid, not to our tropical category, and I think that's going to be at least a little bit of some saving grace for us the next couple days. As far as what it feels like, though, so let's take a look at that. Our high temperature is on the left side there in the orange kind of color contour in the right or on the right side. I guess that's yellow and then orange on the right. 98 is what it will feel like as we get into tomorrow. So out of the next couple of days, I think our Friday is really going to be the one that's most noticeable for how it feels outside. 90 is how it will feel on Saturday, 92 on Sunday. One thing to note too, if you have any plants that really need some water, just plants in general, I know I have some on my patio that are going to be really wanting some the next week because we don't have any rain on the way. Make sure to water those either in the morning or after the daytime heating. So tonight, let's say seven or eight o'clock or so, so you don't scorch your plants. We look at where we sit currently across the region. So big dome of high pressure in place. What that does, it keeps us calm. It keeps us warm though. So that's kind of what we're going to see for the next little while. There's a stationary front just to our south that is bringing some moisture along the coast, some cloud cover, and then a cold front back out into the central Great Plains. But you look across our region, if you're flying from here to Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Lexington, it should be smooth sailing the entire way, and we're looking pretty good here the next couple days. 90 is where we go today, 94 tomorrow. It will be noticeable as far as the heat and humidity tomorrow. 91 Saturday, a bit of a drop on that. 90 Sunday, 93 on Monday. So basically for the next week, plan on between 90 and 95, I think is what we're going to be looking here as far as temperatures are concerned. Where we sit right now, though, it's not too bad. We're sitting in the 60s and 70s, 61 in Roxboro. We're at 71 in Raleigh and Durham, 65 in Goldsboro, currently sitting at 67 in Clinton. Feels like values, not much of a factor out there for us right now. We're not seeing a big, you know, of course, 100 degree heat index or anything like that, and I don't anticipate that. 90 is where we'll go this afternoon, 92 in Fayetteville, upper 80s to the north, so it will be very manageable compared to where we could be for this time of the year. We look at the next seven days, though, rain chance wise into tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, there may be a couple two or three little cells that come through and that's about it. Just some isolated storms. 91 on Saturday, 90 there for Father's Day. A very dry stretch of weather. So again, make sure to water those plants. We'll be watching for that next rain chance, that spotty chance there, Ken, into tomorrow evening. All right, Anthony, happening now in the WRO Traffic Center. We've got a couple of crashes we've been monitoring for the last hour or so. Uh, one on Blue Ridge Road and Wade Avenue and the other one in East Millbrook and Six Forks Road, neither causing any major problems for you this morning. But just look for that police activity in the area. We're seeing the usual morning congestion building on the south side of the Beltline as well. To that end, this is what it looks like. This is I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road. You can see the westbound lanes moving away from us. Uh, very congested this morning, so uh, give yourself some extra time if you're heading out. Now, we just showed you that train service that's running from uh, Raleigh to Pinehurst this morning. If you are driving yourself, it's important to follow the signs and look for one of two free parking lots there in Moore County. Uh, if you're coming from the Triangle, you want to look for the red uh, parking lot that's off Highway 73 there just north of Pinehurst. Uh, the other parking lot is the blue parking lot. This is south of Pinehurst in the uh, town of Aberdeen, that blue parking lot. There'll be shuttle bus services to and from uh, uh, the uh, shuttle buses to and from Pinehurst this morning. And of course, there will be no parking in the village of Pinehurst. That's a quick reminder. One of the most iconic moments in golf happened in Pinehurst 25 years ago when Payne Stewart won the U.S. Open. He fist pumped his way to a championship, but then sadly died a few months later in a plane crash. He's been immortalized with the statue at Pinehurst number two. It's been moved to stand at the front of the at the front entrance, front and center for fans. His caddy for 12 years, Mike Hicks, spoke with WRL. Hicks says Stewart's impact on the world of golf still lives on you know, with today. With the statue here, you know, he's basically mortal now. I mean, he's here, you know, every time I'm here, I, you know, go to the statue, take a picture. So his legacy will live on forever uh, here in Pinehurst. And, um, and what, no better spot for him to be immortalized than the mecca of golf. Crews plan to move the statue back to the 18th hole after the tournament.
Ken, thank you. A special train service departed on its first trip from Raleigh to the U.S. Open. WRS Kelsey Coffey joins us live from Union Station in Raleigh, where the train left in the last 30 minutes. And Kelsey, this is a brand new way to get fans over to Vinehurst. <laughs> Renee, it is. It's so convenient for folks who live in the Triangle. More than 2,000 fans will use this special train service throughout the week, and NCDOT is calling it the Open Express. So take a look at the train route. Hundreds of fans were on their way to Pinehurst Number 2 about 30 minutes ago. This will be the first time people can hop on a train from Raleigh and Cary to get to Pinehurst for the U.S. Open. The Open Express will run on a morning and evening schedule today through Sunday. The train will leave Raleigh Union Station every morning at 7 o'clock. Then it will leave Cary about 15 minutes later at 7.15. It's scheduled to arrive in Pinehurst just before 9.15 every morning. And the evening train will leave Pinehurst at 6.35. What's really exciting about it is we're taking approximately 1,300 cars off the road to Pinehurst over the next four days, relieving the traffic congestion, heading down into the U.S. Open, providing an easy, enjoyable way to enjoy this activity in our state. Now, train tickets uh, are sold out for all this week, but if you want an inside look at all things U.S. Open, just uh, go to our website, WREL.com. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Raleigh. All right, if you are driving to uh, Pinehurst this morning, we just told you about the train service, uh, we've got uh, an opportunity for you to look at those signs, always look at those signs, and it will direct you to one of two free parking lots down there. Uh, if you're leaving from the Triangle, you want to look at the red parking lot as well. That's just north of Pinehurst on Highway 73. Uh, the other lot you'll be looking for uh, off of US-1 is the blue lot there just south of Pinehurst in the town of Aberdeen. There'll be shuttle buses that will take you from the uh, free parking lot uh, to Pinehurst number two. And keep in mind, there will be no parking in the village of Pinehurst. A local golfer is making his showing at the U.S. Open today. Jeff Hogan is in Pinehurst with what we know about Wake Forest native Akshay Batia and the golf journey that led him to this national stage. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, hey, Renee, you've been hearing me talk about this kid for weeks and kid, I say, you know, because he is young on tour. Akshay Bhatia is the 34th ranked player in the world, though. He's made $6 million in his professional career. He's 22 years old. Yeah, you said it, the kid from Wake Forest. He won't tee off until later this afternoon, but he has been rising up the ranks from his junior days, showing promise, even at times dominance. The Wake Forest resident told his parents in eighth grade that he didn't want to go to college because he wanted to be a professional golfer. It wasn't glamorous all the time, but it tested his will and what the journey would take. Uh, so Akshay uh, was telling, uh, his dad was telling me how they would go to, uh, on the road to hotel rooms, and uh, if they couldn't get in, uh, for overbooked or whatever the reason was, they would sleep in the minivan, okay? That'll test your will. If you're a young kid out on the road with your parents trying to figure things out, they knew that his love and desire was going to take him uh, where he needed to be in this. So he doesn't tee off till, like I said, this afternoon. But just a few minutes ago, I could hear the announcement from the 10th tee where Tiger Woods teed off. So I turned around, took a peek right down the middle for Tiger as he gets his day started, Renee. All right. Akshay, just 22 years old and charting his own course, saying, not going to college, but I'm going to do this golf thing. <laughs> Jeff, thank you. A local golfer is making his uh, showing at the U.S. Open today. Jeff Hogan in Pinehurst with what we know about Wake Forest native Ash K. Basia and the golf journey that led him to the national stage. And a big one, too. It is a big stage, and it's a big story as well. And I've enjoyed telling it uh, and talking to his parents over the last couple of weeks. Akshay Batia is ranked 34th in the world. He's made $6 million in his young professional career. He's 22 years old, by the way, okay? So the kid is getting it done, there's no doubt. He's been rising up the ranks from his junior days, showing promise and at times dominance. The Wake Forest resident told his parents in eighth grade he didn't want to go to college because he wanted to be a professional golfer. It wasn't glamorous at times, but it tested his will and what the journey would take. If we can't get a hotel, we can't check in till the next day, we'll sleep in the minivan for a night. I taught him that. I taught him how to travel, how to pack, how to check in at airport. 
pretty strong-willed. Wouldn't you agree to be able to go on the road? He learned a lot from his parents, but now he just tells his parents, uh, just be mom and dad. I'm going to handle my own business. He's been doing it so far. You can't argue with that. And uh, we have a, a complete story on his rise to success coming up uh, today at noon as well. Uh, we'll get to that just a little bit later. Heidi Kirk now with our transportation angle. Jeff, you can feel the excitement from these thousands of fans pouring into the U.S. Open on day one. Now, as you can see, it's been a pretty steady stream of traffic all morning. We've spoken with people who traveled to Pinehurst from the West Coast to the East Coast and everywhere in between. Some of these people are first timers, but others have been waiting to come back since 2014. I came here um, in 2014 and I loved it. I was by myself. Um, but I always said I would go back when, you know, when it returned to Pinehurst and uh, I'm back. And this steady stream of traffic you can see behind me has only been increasing since this morning. And this is what we expect throughout the weekend. Heidi Kirk, WRL News in Pinehurst. Ken, thank you. The U.S. Open is bringing some well-known faces to the area, including, of course, Tiger Woods. WRL's Jeff Hogan is live at Pinehurst 2 right now. And we've heard from Tiger before this week, Jeff. You know, he is well aware of the competition, but he's also just kind of happy to be here, too. Yeah, there's a lot going on here because Tiger Woods, if anybody knows major championships, it's him. He's won 15 of them, okay? He finds himself at the top of the leaderboard again for another one. Brings out the best in the best players in the world. Tiger, of course, being one of them, brings out the best fans as well because they have shown up for this championship and they're on the chase for Tiger right now. Tiger on the chase for a, another championship. If he can make that work, you can expect today when he tees it up on number two, his body is healthy. He, uh, he, healthy enough on a relatively flat course that it is, says he needs to have his mental game intact as well. It looks like that after one hole. The intricacies of the greens, they can mess with you around here. He is chasing guys like Scotty Scheffler and others, but he has a pretty good track record as well. I love U.S. Opens. I love the, the test of U.S. Opens. And I've had a little bit of success here uh, back in 99 and 2005. Yeah, you think? He didn't play in 2014, 2005. He was tied for third, 99. He was runner-up to Payne Stewart. Right now, he is with a handful of guys at one under par after one hole of play. He's playing the 11th hole, his second of the day right now. All eyes on Pinehurst number two. Thanks, Jeff. And, of course, WREL is your home for the U.S. Open. Be sure to tune into WREL for all the action from the first tee to the 18th green. Network coverage begins with the second round tomorrow. And Jeff Hogan and Gerald Owens will lead our coverage on WREL live from Pinehurst 2. You can get all of your content on your phone, your tablet, and your TV, too. A special train service took its first trip from Raleigh to the U.S. Open this morning. This is a game changer when it comes to convenience for people in the Triangle. The Open Express will run on the schedule today through Sunday. The morning train, it left Raleigh Union Station at 7 o'clock this morning. It then leaves Cary at 7.15. The train should arrive at Pinehurst just before 9.15. The evening train will leave the Pinehurst Clubhouse at 6.35. What's really exciting about it is we're taking approximately 1,300 cars off the road to Pinehurst over the next four days, relieving the traffic congestion, heading down into the U.S. Open, providing an easy, enjoyable way to enjoy this activity in our state. And the head of the NCDOT was on the train this morning. All right, thank you, Anthony. The U.S. Open is underway at Pinehurst number two. This is the fourth time our nation's championship has been held there, and it's gearing up to be the hottest U.S. Open ever at Pinehurst. Temperatures will be in the upper 80s to lower 90s, as Anthony was saying. The USGA has set up hydration stations that will be in high demand the rest of the week for sure. One doctor with UNC tells WREL about the things you may notice golfers doing to prevent heat heat-related illnesses. You'll see them kind of trying to prevent that by you know, getting as many breaks as possible from the heat, um, using umbrellas to kind of uh, protect themselves, uh, taking plenty of water breaks. Over 100 EMS workers are standing by in case someone has some sort of emergency. Those water stations, they're also hooked up in a way where they don't have to be refilled, so fresh water is constantly available. 
Jeff, you can feel the excitement from these thousands of fans pouring into the U.S. Open on day one. Now, as you can see, it's been a pretty steady stream of traffic all morning. We've spoken with people who traveled to Pinehurst from the West Coast to the East Coast and everywhere in between. Some of these people are first timers, but others have been waiting to come back since 2014. I came here um, in 2014 and I loved it. I was by myself. Um, but I always said I would go back when, you know, when it returned to Pinehurst and uh, I'm back. And this steady stream of traffic you can see behind me has only been increasing since this morning. And this is what we expect throughout the weekend. Heidi Kirk, WRL News in Pinehurst. Good morning. I am Chris Lovingood in the WRL Live Center. Right now, this is a live feed that we have right there on the ground of the Open Express that we're hoping to see here in a little bit, bringing people from Raleigh, from Cary, to go to Pinehurst to see the U.S. Open. The train essentially leaves the Raleigh Union Station at 7, and then it left Cary at 7.15, and should, be, should arrive, or should have arrived, I should say, at 9.15, so it could possibly be late at this time. The evening train will leave the Pinehurst Clubhouse at 6.35 tonight, and the thing is, the whole reason they're having this train is of course to cut down on carbon emissions that way you can get cars off the road and then more people on the train so they can go down and see the uh the u.s open in style and also help the environment it makes sense thanks chris and wrl is your home for the u.s open be sure to tune in to wrl for all the action from the first tee to the 18th green network coverage begins with the second round tomorrow jeff hogan and gerald owens will lead our coverage on wrl live from pinehurst you can get all of our content on your phone tablet and tv the U.S. Open is underway at Pinehurst number two. This is the fourth time in our nation that uh, our nation's championship has been held there, and it's going to be one of the hottest U.S. Opens ever in Pinehurst. Temperatures will be in the upper 80s and lower 90s, as Anthony has been pointing out all morning long. The USDA is setting up hydration stations that will be in high demand the rest of the week. Now, one doctor with UNC tells WRL about the things you may notice golf is doing to prevent a heat-related illness. You'll see them kind of trying to prevent that by you know, getting as many breaks as possible from the heat, um, using umbrellas to kind of uh, protect themselves, uh, taking plenty of water breaks. Uh, I think fans will be doing the same thing. More than 100 EMS workers are standing by just in case someone suffers some type of emergency. Now, those water stations are hooked up in such a way where they don't have to be refilled, so fresh water is constantly available. 